Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Nadi Digital Economy uh, for, for Malaysia, right, this week. And with me is my colleague Zof Azmi. We're going to just get right into it now. And with, with actually a, a commentary that I wrote on, uh, on MDEC, uh, because a, a lot of senior people in the tech ecosystem have been concerned. The key word is people are concerned because there are these constant uh, uh, rumors around uh, a change of, of CEO, right, at, uh, at an MDEC. And this was even going back as far as end of last year. But, uh, and even in, in, mm -hmm. in March and April of this year, uh, people were already kind of like instigating me, hey, Karam, you need to write the story. Apparently the chairman, the CEO is going to change. No, they don't get along with this person, that person. And I was thinking, wow, is she that unpopular? Or maybe she must be doing something right for people not to like what's going on. So never wrote about that because I said, hey, <laughs> he already has a tough enough job, right? Uh, and COVID has made it worse, uh, worse because yes. MDEC, although MDEC is a digital agency uh, promoting digital economy, a lot of the initiatives are actually uh, a high touch, right? Trying to reach to the B40, the, the bottom 40%, right? And even with SMEs also, and you need face-to-face -face interaction with people to convince them of the value of, of going digital, adopting programs. So kind of ironic in that sense, but so I'm wondering how much of the difficulty is because everything has had to go virtual since last year, you know, uh, mid-April, mid-March, not sure. But what happened is that over the past three weeks, the, the rhetoric just got stronger. And even uh, senior executives within MDEC were telling me that people who know them are constantly calling them and asking, hey, what's going on, man? What's going on? Is there going to be a change and all that? And people are asking me. So, so I felt I needed to do a piece. And really, the point is that I'm, I'm, my piece was really addressed to the board, right? The board needs to take decisive action to either come out and say that, look, all these uh, rumors are unfounded and we are firmly behind the CEO, right? Her contract is up till the second week of February, uh, January of next year. That's literally like uh, uh, what five and a half five and a half months away. We're gonna we're behind now. She's got work to do. We're focusing on you know uh, building MDEC up and, and doing what it needs to do. Or if there's some truth to these rumors, then a rising number of people seem to think they are come out and say so. Yes, you know that there, there's you know X period and then the the, the you know the, the CEO will be leaving. So I don't know what's but it's damaging to MDEC. Right. Uh, to morale also. People have been telling me it's, it's damaging yes. to morale. And they just want to get on without being distracted. 110% just do what they're supposed to do. So that was the my motivation for just putting the story out there and hoping it'll catalyze some action and, and clear the air, right? Clear the air. I mean, I mean, the thing is, Karam, uh, I don't know whether, I mean, you know this, that I used to work with MDC when it was MDC before they became MDEC. But I know I knew a lot of people who were in MDC and obviously over the years, over the, it's been 25 years now and over the years, many people have left, but I, I still had people that I, from way back then, still, still uh, with MDC. And the truth is that um, I think from at least a public perspective, the first people saw of it was from late last year when, when a large number of people left M MDC and there was a lot of conjecture at the time. Why did they do so? Did they leave on a court or they pushed or did they jump, you know? And, and the truth of the matter is, well, I don't want to talk this politics, but the truth is that it is always a bit complicated. So it's, it's never quite just one thing going on at one time, but uh, you, I, you hit the nail on the head when you say some people are not comfortable with it at all, are not happy with it. Some people just want to get the work done. Some people just uh, want the whole thing to be over with. So, so that so the, is getting a new CEO now, does that bring better stability moving forward? Or is it more stable to let Serena run until the end of her term next year and, and then a graceful handover with with somebody so so yes these are all things that you can talk about you lit a fire by the way at uh karam with with your article and a lot of people were 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 talking about it I but did not uh, intend to. my 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 motivation was my concern and and even this morning my phone you know there was a discussion i'm, I'm in a small group with some senior industry people and just they, they just feel that they were saying that uh, MDEC seems to have lost its way. And I think that, and just doing too many things, 
And I realized that I think of the perception that they're doing too many things comes from the fact that, you know, they've got their digital uh, DIF5, right? Digital Investment Future 5, mm -hmm. right? Uh, strategy, which is actually specifically related to bringing in FDI into Malaysia. And here you've got five, they're looking at five future technologies and five current technologies. And you've got your blockchain, your artificial intelligence, your machine learning, right? Your, your augmented, uh, you know, so AR, uh, no, 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 XR, extended reality, right? So they say hey, you've got so many things and then, mm -hmm. you, you know, your you have got various different things you want to do. So they say, why are they trying to like, like touch so many things? And I think MDEC has always been touching anything under the, the technology ecosystem, but it was maybe not so mm -hmm. evident, right? So now that you've got this D DIF5, and then, you know, you've got the, the, the new strategy also of, you know, trying to, uh, with the new leadership team, right? We're, we're doing this and that. So people tend to feel they're doing too many things, but I, I don't feel so. Uh, and then this and this negative uh, people are, are becoming uh, senior people are like I say are not say people like all thirty six million Malaysians lah right, but senior people in the industry are just uh, are just uh, uh, worried lah right and and uh, about this and that MDEC is getting too diluted so then you don't have impact so the concern is that MDEC is not having the impact that everyone wants MDEC to have and that MDEC should have period so hopefully the board can come and clarify I this. So that we know, you know, until January for sure. And if they want to change, right, go ahead. But I think there's also a sense that they've already picked someone to the they, they, they meaning Ministry of Finance and, and the Ministry of Communication, pick someone. So I don't know how true that is. Lah. And I don't want to keep, I don't want to dig some more about that, right? Mm -hmm. yes, the, I, I feel that as a journalist, I've done my part now to, <laughs> to bring this to, to a level where all oh, people are aware and, and, and maybe some action can be taken, but otherwise, I'm not going to do something where you know, or DNA is like like keep poking here and there. What, what are they trying to do? No. I mean, I, we, we should put this to rest, but just to say, I think stability has to be the key word here, right? Mm. So um, something where people know moving, going down the road. Now, obviously, we are in COVID, we're in a pandemic, nothing is stable right now, but yeah, yeah. certainly a sense that there's a firm hand on the tiller that the direction is clear that work that you're doing now will be relevant six months or nine months down the road. I think that's the kind of feeling people want to have. Oh, it's very true. So quickly, I'm forward. just looking at my phone and ah, I'm just That's all I have to say about that. No, that's fine. Look, I'm just looking at my phone and I'm just uh, uh, checking on what somebody says that... Uh, uh, oh, yeah. So, and, and so some... Okay, so like I spoke to the... Actually, I didn't speak. Like, I messaged somebody who's uh, the, the, the VC of one of the top university, private universities in the country, I say, hey, how's the, the premier digital you know, uh, tech institution initiative is going? And quickly, this is an initiative MDEC launched in, I think, 2017, where they want to upgrade uh, the capabilities and capacity of our universities, public and private, especially in the computer science and, and the you know, engineering faculties, right? And they've been doing, and that program is called PDTI. There's a number of institutions now in that program. So this VC, I said, hey, what's going on with the PDTI? You know, is it going well? And he says that from our perspective, the engagement with MDEC has been quite active. They've been facilitating links, you know, blah, 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 blah. And it, it's all going well. And actually another, another uh, leader in a private university also echoed around the same thing. So I know that there are things going on on the ground and they are doing their job. But uh, I think this one month of this, you know, uh, this uh, Malaysia, uh, you know, uh, tech, uh, uh, Malaysia Tech Month is making people seem like, hey, MDAG is uh, just an event organizer. So because they are doing a big publicity push around the you know, Malaysian Tech Month, right? And it's one month long. So their, their social media are constantly pushing out. Today, we've got this talk, that talk. So people mm -hmm. say, hey, is MDAG only organizing talks? So that inadvertently has had a negative perception of people who already, you know, are concerned about this. So, but I would, argue that the concerns are overstated, I think. Uh, the organization is going ahead and doing the work that many don't see, obviously. But of course, the concerns are with the, with the, with the CEO position. So let's get that clarity done. So we can all you know, move ahead, uh, united, right, and in, uh, in one direction. Mm -hmm. That's what I would say. So shall we move on, Zoff, or you, mm -hmm. you have a, a long pause uh, to say something else? Yes. <laughs> 
No, no, I think, I think we could spend an hour talking about MDEC's vision for Malaysia's future. And that's <laughs> a different show for a different story that we're looking at uh, is a story about finance. And uh, the Security Commission, the, the headline reads, the Security Commission clamps down on Binance for illegal operations. Fundamentally, Binance is uh, accused of being an illegally, uh, of Bi Binance accused of illegally operating a oh. digital uh, asset sorry, exchange. Uh, stop, stop, stop. Um, uh, Josh, for... sorry. Uh, restart this again, because we are already at, at 18 minutes. Yeah? So keep this one short, okay? Uh, so you can just start this again. Let's go on to the next story and do Binance. Yeah. Just to you, of course, we already had uh, plus 18 minutes. Yeah. Okay. So, so what do you want me to do? No, just, say, just start again, but be aware well, of the time. So keep this one tight. Yeah, short. So we can then do the last one also. Okay. All right. Okay. So, um, so the news is that if you are someone that uses Binance to trade, uh, be aware that the Securities Commission is clamped down on it because they are accusing Binance of operating illegally operating a digital asset exchange. Uh, fundamentally, Binance is a place that you can go and buy crypt and sell cryptocurrency, yep. except for Malaysia, you have to be licensed in order to do so. Um, I know a lot of people who, who have accounts on Binance who are concerned about it and are debating whether to pull all their money out of Binance in case it goes bad. And they, and they have a significant amount in Binance, I think. A lot of people have, a lot of Malaysians have. Mm -hmm. um, some have countered by saying there are ways we can get around any block or ban by using you know, things like VPNs, for example, to circumvent. Uh, but I think people should know that Malaysia isn't the only country that's trying oh, to yeah. come down on Binance. Um, I mean, Thailand's doing it, Japan's doing it, Hong Kong's doing it. Yep. India is looking at stuff. Uh, Europe, you know, some countries in Europe are looking at uh, their derivative market. So the, the issue is, is that, um, and these are not all on the same things. They're not all looking at digital asset exchanges. They're looking at different, different angles of Binance. The UK is looking at the fact that they are, they're not, uh, um, they're not meeting any money, anti-money laundering requirements. Uh, yeah. So, so I think I think if you have money in Binance, my suggestion might be look very, very carefully at what's going on. Uh, it might be wise to pull money out. Okay. Good. Okay. Very good. Uh, okay. So let's move on to the the last two quick one. One is on on uh, Hong Leong Bank, right? Uh, of course, Hong Leong Bank is yes. a Malaysian base, but they they also have a presence in a few regional countries, and they have launched their inaugural. ASEAN uh, level, right? Uh, ESG team hackathon. So ESG mm -hmm. is, of course, you know, environment, sustainability, mm -hmm. and governance, right? It's a huge thing now. Many listed, uh, many, uh, mm -hmm. uh, 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 you know, uh, com security commission uh, around the world have now mandated that listed companies have to build their businesses and do their reporting, you know, with a strong ESG team, right? So great. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Hong Leong has... Uh, I like this because look, it's their first ASEAN-based one. They open it up and there's an ESG team and it's called, they use the brand name, Can You Hack It? Okay. And this really is just at, it, at its base level, it is open innovation. They want all the, the ASEAN residents, right, to, to be aware of what they're doing and to come up with ideas on how they think they can make, uh, uh, they can come up with a service that will allow Hong Leong then to deliver that service to its customers around the region, right? in a more efficient manner and giving much more uh, strong, higher customer experience right, uh, to the market. And I think that's great for them to do that. So price money is not great, but if you mm -hmm. want to be involved and you want, hopefully you get chosen right, and you get into this, there's, there's great branding rights for you right, to say, hey, our team won this and you know mm -hmm. uh, our product is being used by Hong Leong Bank. So that's great. So let's move on to the last article, which is uh, on uh, uh, another bank, right? Coincidentally, so which is Hong Kong Shanghai Bank, which has launched their uh, digital black belt, right? Uh, uh, development program. So at the global level, uh, Hong, uh, Hong, I'm going to say Hong Leong, uh, HSBC, although it starts with H, HSB Bank <laughs> has identified five skill sets, right? At the global level that they think as a financial institution, their team, their people need to uh, imbue and, and to, you know, to be familiar with in order for the talent pool to be future ready. So for Hong Kong, for Malaysia, HSBC Malaysia has actually picked three of these. And what they've picked is data science, data analytics, and automation and machine learning as one. 
So what's interesting is at the global level, they've actually, they're looking at machine learning, cybersecurity, which is not a surprise, right? Uh, data and analytics, software development, which is actually very broad, but they picked it as one, one course, and then user interface and experience design, global level. Malaysia, as I said, has picked these three things, but you know, Malaysia has segmented data science into data analytics and data science. Sorry, I know you call it sometimes data analytics, right? They are saying that, and I asked them, hey, Normally, when people talk about data analytics, data science is considered a, an expert in data analytics, right? So you're, you've reached a data science level, you're the highest level within the, you know, understanding data analytics. They said, no, to us, data analytics and data science are two different things. You can go and read the article for why they say that. But basically, this is about a, a, a brick and mortar company, which is aware that digital is disrupting their business and is changing customer behavior and it's changing the very nature of work also. And they are now taking it to the next, instead of just rhetoric, yeah, we are adapting digital, everybody needs to move. They are doing something about this. And how they've done is if they now identified three skill set that they, they think the Malaysian team needs. And for this uh, uh, first group of people who are involved, I, I think the managers choose them. Okay, you know, Karamjit Zoff, you, I think you need to do this for your, uh, for your work. And I think it's about like a, a nine to 10 week long program and you got to finish it and you get a cert. And then you can go on to another one of the, the other two programs. And for, for but after this first group of people go through, everyone in HSBC Malaysia is entitled to choose themselves and say, hey, I think boss, I want to go for this program. And uh, the time-wise, it's mm -hmm. a combination of you doing it on your own time and doing it on company time. So they're giving you that flexibility or so. Hope a lot more corporates in Malaysia look at this and say, yeah, you know, instead of just talking about this, yeah. instead of just allowing that the IT team or the technical team or the innovation team, you know, upskill themselves, everyone in the organization, okay, these are the skill set we identified that we feel you need to help you be valuable to us as an employer. Please choose and, you know, go on it uh, at your own pace then. So great initiative, I think. Uh, sorry, Zoff, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Uh, I just want to say, Karam, I, I just want to add that this mirrors so similarly to what uh, Petronas are doing themselves with their own in, in, initiatives. And I think the point to take here is that they are learning these new skills in the hope they apply to do their work in a different way. And I think this is, this is a key point that people need to understand. It's not doing what you're already doing better, but to sort of relook about what you're doing. And, and that's why there's this like you said, Karam, that they can choose which skills they want to pick up, right? Because the people at the ground level will better understand yes. what they need to improve at yeah. to change. And uh, this might be something that many companies in Malaysia are not really that comfortable about, mm -hmm. letting the, the, the guys on the ground level um, uh, lead the change, as it were. But I think it's what needs to be considered to move effectively forward, yeah. move forward effectively. And to have a future ready workforce. So yeah, cool. So great. Okay, that's all we have for this week. Uh, we hope you enjoyed some of the stories we brought and some of our opinions, whether our opinions are right or wrong. Hey, that's where the comment section in YouTube is for you, you know, to, to express your opinion. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again next week.